But of course, in those days uh, too, as we used to call them, I uh, days, uh, we didn't have uh, any entertainment of any uh, description. No, we made our own entertainment of any uh, description. No, we made our own entertainment in those days by watching the television. Aye, watching the television. That's the way that we put it. And we would all gather around the television, the whole family, the whole oh, 17 of us, it would have been on a, a good night. Aye, uh, the whole family in a big circle. Uh, half of us looking at the, the back of it, for God's sake. And, oh, it was a pastime. Now, it made the night uh, shorter, it would have been. Aye. Oh, it was good enough for us. And, um, oh, you would spend two hours, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, twelve, twenty-four hours uh, watching the television. And at the finish up, my grandmother, she would be sure to say, Turn it on. <laughs> Aye, turn it on, says she. We knew rightly what she meant. <laughs> turn it on, says she. And we'll watch it, says she, in that order. And we'll enjoy it, says she, whether we like it or not. And on the television would go. Now, was there programs on that television? Uh, yes was the short, pithy answer to that particular stupid question. Oh God, programs! Programs! Programs wasn't the word. Can't remember what the word was now. <laughs> but I'm damn sure it wasn't programs, no. Oh, films, stories, advertisements, news, more news, close down, the best of the bunch of them, in my opinion, was the advertisements. Oh God, they were good now. And they would be repeats. <laughs> oh God, six times in the same evening, sometimes. Somebody would say, that was on before. <laughs> 20 minutes ago on on the other side, on the back of the television. <laughs> but uh, there, there was no point in complaining. Many a time we rang up and complained. <laughs> there was no point in ringing, having no phone. <coughs> you might as well be talking to the wall. In fact, you were talking to the wall. But, oh God, the advertisements, the best of the whole bunch of them was one the name of the woman and the washing powder. Oh God, she was an advertisement, unfortunately. <laughs> and that concerned a woman, funny enough, who used to wash the clothes. And oh, she had been using the same powder <laughs> 40 years or more. Oh, happy enough. Happy enough in her own way, <laughs> until be God one day, what came on the scene, only a new powder. There was no other word for it. Revolutionary, biological, biodegradable, environmentally friendly, blue grains, white grains, all rammed into the same packet together. <laughs> Says she to herself, I don't think, says she, for a minute, <laughs> that this new powder will be any better, says she, than my old powder. Oh, no. But, says she, uh, just to be awkward, just to wa waste a quarter of a million pounds <laughs> on an April Fool of an advertising campaign, says she, 
I'll give it a try. So, to cut a long story, uh, what we used to call in those days, for want of a better word, I suppose, as much as anything else, when it boils down to it at the finish up with the head of the hunt, not to be too fine a point on it. Short. She went out to the supermarket, bought the new powder, brought it home, put it in the machine, gave it the full bikes, the full cycle. 40 degrees or some damn number between 1 and 3,000. <laughs> Took out the clothes. Be God, they were spotless. <laughs> she could not believe her eyes. If there was one thing she couldn't believe, <laughs> it was her eyes. <laughs> Any other part of her anatomy. She would have given it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> if it had been her elbow, she would have swallowed it. <laughs> but she drew the line at her eyes with a big, thick red marker <laughs> uh, and, and coloured in one of her ears as well and, and started on her arse. It was an advertisement and a half now. <laughs> and then she drilled a hole. I never forgot it. A hole at the top of her nose. And the right eye looked at the left eye and said, pull the other one. <laughs> now, at that particular moment, who came walking up the road only the man in the white coat. He was an expert. You nearly know to look at him. The way he was running. Aye. The expert in the white coat, he came jogging up the road. He had two. Let me get this right now. It's a good one if you get it right. Two packets of the old powder. Oh, <laughs> you couldn't be up to him. Uh, he tried to pull a fast one, Hey, Straight in the door of this woman's house. Christ through the front door, head down, didn't bother opening the door. <laughs> head butted 50 mile an hour, blood all over the head. Rubbed on the white coat, sweat, black current juice, sweat, stains, shit. <laughs> Straight into the kitchen, will you swap? Didn't bother saying hello. No such thing as uh, sorry about the door, Mrs. <laughs> I've got another one now at home in the garage that might fit. It's six inches too narrow and it's the wrong colour, but to hell with it, any port in a storm. <laughs> Nothing remotely like that stream of nonsense, no. Will you swap? He was on drugs as well, of course. <laughs> and the woman took one look at him with a shite hanging off him. Blood all over the place, sweat everywhere, shit all over the floor. No! No, says she. No. No, I will not swap, says she. And you'll wipe that shite off the floor, says she. But that's another advertisement, says she. Oh, she's level-headed now. She swiped the top of her head with a bread knife. More blood, for God's sake. It was getting messy right now. And she'd keep the knife well up his throat. Oh, God, he would frighten a woman alone in a kitchen. I will not swap, says he, old drug head, expert, shite head. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, black current arse, says he. <laughs> Focus your eyes, says she, for God's sake. Come down to those drugs and get that shite out of your other eye and take a look, says she, at little Jimmy's t-shirt. <laughs> that t-shirt, says she, keeping the knife well up in his throat now. He couldn't trust him for a minute. That t-shirt, says she, had a damn bad old egg stain on it. 
and now honest to God between myself and yourselves and what you might call the wall. There was a damn bad stain on that particular garment and it had been there oh, 20 years or more. <laughs> and she had scrubbed the, that egg for about 15 years and at the finish up she said to hell with it wear the damn t-shirt or go naked says she to little Jimmy the husband <laughs> because this new powder had shifted that egg nobody knew where it was nobody cared it was down the back of the machine somewhere clogging up the fan belt subs all over the floor up to the expert jars Hang on, said the expert. So just tickling the balls off him. <laughs> I'm giving you two, says he. Two for one. <laughs> Is that not more, says he, or am I going mad altogether? I don't give a damn, says she. I have got a wife, says she. Cleaner. Cleaner poking him in the eyes for emphasis <laughs> and to remind him of the number two cleaner than I ever thought possible <laughs> bluey white bluey white some bastard put die in the washing machine <laughs> and from that day on nothing else would do only the new revolutionary biological biodegradable environmentally friendly how's it going environment soft day for a hole in the ozone there <laughs> Uh, washing powder. And that would go on now most of the night until my grandfather, he would be sure to say, well, says he, it's time for bed. Or else, says he, a damn good old-fashioned joke. Aye, that's the choice that we were faced with. And at the finish up, he would say, ah, tell us a joke, Granny. One for the road, for God's sake. And she would go, ah, no, no. Uh, I don't know any jokes because she knew thousands of them but it was a hard job getting them out of her go on my grandfather would say one one for God's sake no 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 says she and that would go on for a couple of weeks until my grandfather he would get the shotgun out and uh, tie her arms and legs together and ram an old Ireland's own down her throat all right she would say maybe one for the road Aye, on second thoughts. And away she would go telling the jokes. Oh, God. Oh, the, I, I, I can't remember any of them now, but I, I remember laughing. Aye. Now, she told them, and we uh, laughed at them. Aye. That's the arrangement that we had now. And, oh, if I can remember one of them now, I'll be doing well, but uh, here goes anyway. <laughs> um, how? Aye. That was, a, that was her way of starting an old joke. Aye. How, says she, would you get four elephants into a small car? Aye. Because that was a damn good riddle. Now, that would set you thinking right enough. Uh, my grandfather, he would stand up and he would scratch his head with the cat. Aye. And he would say, four. Four elephants in a car. Don't talk shite. Don't be wasting my time, woman, when I could be in my bed enjoying myself. Aye. Four elephants in a car. You'd have a better chance, for God's sake, of getting Big Tom into the bath. Uh, can any of them drive? Uh, no clues, she would say. Oh, God, she was starting to enjoy herself. And we would have to guess away all night, the whole 17 of us. Oh, two elephants on the roof rack, maybe and two hanging on to the back bumper uh, hanging on down the motorway 70 mile an hour shitting all over the dual carriageway no says she not that one oh god two of them on the side mirror and one of them up on the roof oh we would we would guess away all night now to be honest and at the finish up she would have to put us out of her misery and tell us the answer and it was a damn good one, oh, if, I can, if I can get it now. It's a good one if you can remember it. Uh, two. Two elephants in the back, it was. And be God, another two in the front. 
Oh, God, we would laugh at that joke. It, it was a damn good one. It, it was the way she'd hold it, eh? You'd have to have been there and be stoned out of your head now. And, oh, we would laugh at that joke. The set of those elephants, the two of them on the front with the, wind, the trunks sticking out through the one screen. And, oh, the, the boy that owned the car, he came along and he was raging. You should have seen his face. Oh, God, and the two in the back shitting all over the back seat. And the suspension was in ribbons. Five hundred pound, be God, for a new suspension. He was beside himself. The joke was on him now. Oh, you had to laugh at him. You had to laugh. Out of boredom as much as anything else. Oh, God, your sides would be sore from uh, granddad uh, poking the shotgun in them and saying, keep laughing for God's sake before she tells another one. <laughs> Darn grandma. <laughs> and then the seventies came along, oh hot on the heels of the sixties, eh? And oh, the 70s, they started about 1974. <laughs> Would have been the first of them, eh? And um, oh, the punk rock. Oh, <laughs> the punk rock came hopping in the door, eh? Oh, that was a, a movement and a half. And my grandfather, he got the scythe out one day. And he cut the swathe off our bell bottoms. That would have made drawers for Big Tom, eh? Uh, that was the start of it, and he hung the whole lot of us upside down and pasted the big long hair into the point. The whole lot of us, and hung us up there for about three days till it dried and stood us up the right way. Oh, God, it was up to the ceiling, right enough. Uh, that was the punk rock, the sex pastels. Oh, God, forgive them, aye. The sex pastels, aye. My grandmother would say, Make love, not war. Ah, to hell with that. My grandfather would say, get out your sex pistols. <laughs> and you can do the two of them at the same time. <laughs> but, oh, they were, they were a band and a half. The Rottens. The Rottens. Johnny Rotten. The Rottens. They were all rotten. <laughs> and suited them down to the ground. Now, Johnny Rotten. Oh, he was rotten right enough. And then Sidney Vicious. The Rottenses and the Vicious's. Oh, they were like Rottweilers, right now. That hadn't been bathed for 20 years. Uh, they had an oil chart topper, the name of Pretty Vacant. Oh, God, that was a tune. We're so pretty, says they. And we were all pretty, pretty in those days. And pretty vacant, aye. We're so pretty, oh, so pretty, but vacant. We're good looking, but thick. Could have been guards, the whole lot of them. <laughs> if they hadn't been so good looking, aye. <laughs> but, oh God, that was a damn good punk rock, aye. Pretty vacant, and um, my grandfather, he would say, come on, let's get a couple of old earrings on our ears. And he would get a pile of six inch nails, <laughs> hammer us all to the wall <laughs> and a couple of safety pins up your nose and a couple of tags out of the cows on your ears <laughs> and chains and binder twine and oh, barbed wire wrapped around you 20 times <laughs> and us roaring away like madmen <laughs> on a Friday evening and who would stick his head round the door only the parish priest and he would say, a peaceful evening to all here. <laughs> and my grandmother would say, to hell with you, you bastard yet. <laughs> you bloody neo-capitalist, misogynist pig yet. Yeah. <laughs> you patriarchal load of shite, you bastard yet. Yeah. I'm an antichrist, says he. <laughs> Let me off this wall and I'll hit the bastard. Hold me back. Nail me down. 
And he would say, oh, come on, let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> and we would say, all oh, right, Father, if that's the way you want it. <laughs> <laughs> and we would cover him in snot. <laughs> From head to toe, the crater. <laughs> oh, 40 shades of green. That was a good old punk classic, eh? Never mind the bollocks. Here comes Laurie Cunningham. That was another. <laughs> that was another good one, eh? Uh, my grandfather, he would say, "Come on, come on, get a wee bit of speed. Here, a wee bit of speed, and we we'll say the rosary. Come on." <laughs> Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Hail Mary, Holy Mary, Hail Mary, Holy Mary. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, me, me. <laughs> Mystical Rose, Terror of Ivy, Terror of Davy on the outside, coming in with a late challenge. <laughs> Gate of Heaven a faller there, Mystical Rose gaining ground. As we move into the last three minutes of the game, it's Ireland 1, England 0. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph protect us. <laughs> oh, our mother of international soccer, pray for us. Our mother of, it. Our mother of indoor soccer, pray for us. Our mother of per perpetual soccer, intercede for a small island nation that has kept the faith through centuries of repression by the assassinate English bastards. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph look sideways on us. Oh, me Polk, me call have hit the bastard in the chest, knock him down. As the English move up the field, oh, it's a, it's a free kick dead straight in front of the goals. With two minutes, oh God help us now and at the sudden hour of our death in this agony of the playoff. <laughs> Plunkett, Pierce, Tone and McGrath are in the wall. <laughs> Lineker moves up to take it, oh St. Patrick put a snake up his drawers. <laughs> the Holy Ghost descend in tongues of flames and burn the arse of the Sassanac English bastard. <laughs> oh St. Martin give him gangrene in his left foot and trip the shite. As he comes up to hit it, oh, the spirit of 1916 rise off the line and head it over the bar. <laughs> President Kennedy intercede for us now at an hour of need. <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald, where are you now when we need you? <laughs> oh, it was a damn good old drug. You take four normal people. <laughs> Invite them into your home. <laughs> Tie them down to the armchair. <laughs> Ask them a few personal questions. <laughs> Tickle them a bit. <coughs> and this is what you get. <laughs> He's the big one. small but she's got a big head <laughs> 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 
This purry bastard. <laughs> no arms? <laughs> She's got arms. There's one of them there. There's the other one over there. <laughs> what sort of mentality? We paint a wall that color. Cheaper than buying paint, I suppose. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. What is it about Daniel O'Donnell? <laughs> it makes the bastard so successful. <laughs> Not that I begrudge him anything. <laughs> Fair play to Daniel. This is that strong Donegal chin. Is it the hairy chest? <laughs> All those tea bags? The dead telephone? <laughs> the bullet holes in his head? His sensitive ears? The bike pipes? Benny Hill? God knows. Oh, there was only one singer now who could hold a candle to Gary Lither was a young slip of a girl the name of Donna. You see? And Donna... She had no surname as such, but that didn't stop her singing, oh no. She roared away regardless. And Donna's big chart topper was a tune the name of all kinds of what we used to call uh, everything. Aye. Oh, that was a hit. Aye. And that concerned this boyfriend, you see, that Donna, oh, she was very fond of him now. She thought about him 24 hours uh, a day, if not more, aye. And what did she do? Only she made a list, you see, of all the things uh, under the sun that reminded her of this young uh, Lachico that she had her eye on, aye. And, oh, that was some list now, right enough. It, um, it kept her off the streets, I suppose. She was on the dole in Derry, you see, and it passed the time for her, and oh, it was some list now, I mean, the time I heard me, uh, my grandfather, when he would get a few pints of uh, potching on him, uh, home from the pub, singing that list at the top of his voice, now, he learnt it off the gramophone, and I learnt it off him, and if I can remember half of that list now, uh, I'll be doing well, but anyway, here goes anyway, <coughs> now, Snowdrops, uh, daffodils, oh, butterflies, uh, bees, aye. Any time at all she saw a bee flying past, she would say to herself, Begod, says she, that bumble is a dead ringer for my wee shamey. Aye, bee, bee for bastard, I suppose, aye. Oh, sailboats, uh, fishermen, 
things of the sea. Aye. Marine life generally. Oh, washing wells, wedding bells, early morning dew, dancing, romancing, daffodils, oh, grey skies, blue skies, helicopters, barbed wire, Monday, Tuesday, every day. Every day, but especially uh, early on in the week. If you ask Dana on a Friday evening, how's we shimmy the bee? She would say, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know any shimmy bee. Oh, God, she would get annoyed very quick, Dana. But that was most of dancing, romance. Oh, snowflakes. A snowflake. Or even uh, two snowflakes. Aye, depending on the weather. But the moral, anyway, of the whole uh, rigmarole was that there wasn't one thing under the sun that didn't remind her of this young Lachico that she had her eye on. <laughs> Welcome to Northern Ireland. <laughs> That's me. Nine years old. Like most young Catholics in the North in the 60s, I was brought up with them large chip on my shoulder. <laughs> My first real gun. My grandfather's last photograph. <laughs> he always said the pen was mightier than the sword. I said, what about the camera versus the shotgun? <laughs> ah, I was far too fast for him. He wasn't the worst. <laughs> he saw the funny side of it anyway. <laughs> He's a simple man. All he ever wanted to do was get pissed out of his head every night and stagger home from the pub singing the old songs. He would always forget that he had only one leg. <laughs> oh, it was tough growing up in those flats, piss all over the stairs, <laughs> used condoms everywhere. <laughs> Great man on the old skateboard as well. <laughs> we got on all right with the neighbours. There was a bit of tension under the surface, but <laughs> nothing was ever said. There might have been a little argument over the sighting of an orange lodge, or <laughs> somebody might rob somebody else's marijuana plants. But uh... <laughs> oh, the RUC were pretty quick on the scene if there was any trouble. <laughs> BBC weren't far behind. Here's the old continuity girl. You know, rugby shirt. Oh, we'd have a good old smoke to ourselves and we'd all go home laughing. <laughs> Up to our own every time. <laughs> There's someone you don't see anymore. <laughs> Bernadette Devlin with short hair. It's nice to see the talk from the north still going on, though. <laughs> well, they're doing their best. It's John Hume, Big Ian. Once an orange man, always an orange man. I mean, it's not as if anybody's putting them up to it, is it? <laughs> Chatting away there happily. How about we drink, John? Oh, no, never touch it in. Ah, go on, have something, have something, have a short. No, 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 never, never, never going to hear it. Ah, go on, have something. Ah, maybe an orange squash. Don't fucking orange squash me, you bastard.
farmers. Aye, that's what we were, I suppose, uh, for want of a better word. Small, unadulterated, God-fearing uh, farmers. The whole lot of us put together. But the best farmer of the bunch was one of the McDonald's boys. Aye. And um, was he a young man? Uh, no. On the contrary. Uh, my grandfather, oh God, he, he had a nickname. He had a, he had a name for everybody, my grandfather. Oh, he was a witty man. And what did he call him only uh, old? McDonald's, you see. Oh, it was a damn good one. It suited him. Down to the ground, aye. And old McDonald, oh God, he had a farm. Oh God, a dirty big 300 acre plot now, to be honest. And nobody begrudged him the big farm, the tight-fisted land-grabbing bastard. Uh, oh no, he, he wasn't the worst, old MacDonald, but he, he must have been damn near the, the shite. No. And old MacDonald, he had a farm, and on that farm, he had some range of base now, to be brutally honest about it. Oh God, if it had four legs at all, or a beak, or a wing, or showed any sign of life, he had it. Oh, hens. Talk about hens. There would be um, a buck buck. There was no other word for it. A buck buck. Oh, God, here. And uh, that wasn't the only buck buck. Oh, no. There would be another buck buck. Over there, somewhere else. Can't remember the location of half of those damn buck bucks now. But there would be a buck buck here and there and everywhere. Oh, God, they were all over the place, those hens. Uh, free range bastards they were, eh? And then there was dogs. Oh, woof, woof. Oh, God, I knew them all off the top of my head, eh? A woof, woof here and there. And uh, cows going uh, moo, moo, I think it would have been, eh? And donkeys going hee-haw, 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 eh? That was us, stoned out of our heads, but we, we blamed the donkey for it. And horses going nay, nay, here, and nay, nay, there. Aye, Ulster says uh, nay, nay, in other words. And uh, pigs going hello, hello, here, and hello, hello, there. Oh, hanging out of the trees. Aye, special branch they were, in other words. But there was some range of base, anyway. And old MacDonald, he tended these animals to give them his due. Oh, for about 75 years he was after them. And at the finish up, he got, he got fed up with a whole damn gang of them. Something snapped in his head. I don't know what it was, a crocodile or a helicopter or something. And he went out one evening, six o'clock in the evening. He says to the wife, I'm going out, says he, to shut up the hens. And he grabbed the shotgun and away out the door... And he rounded up every animal within a 300 mile radius now. And he lined them up against the wall and he got the shotgun, cocked it up, the double barrel sawn off shotgun. He had to saw it off to get it into his pocket. Aye. And old MacDonald, he made mincemeat of the whole damn lot of them. And he opened a range of burger shops and the old bastard he made a fortune out of that as well I I was the black sheep really <laughs> <laughs> Lama God Lama God <laughs> I was granddad's favourite really ticky 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 always had a smile on his face old granddad Used to really annoy people at funerals. <laughs> My grandmother wasn't amused. <laughs> she was the black sheep of her family as well. <laughs> Granddad, very fond of a sheep. That's my mother's side of the family there. <laughs> Got them all together on the beach one day.
Aunt Mary could never take a town. <laughs> That's my aunt. She had a lousy social life because of her feet. She wasn't allowed into disco, she was regarded as a fire hazard. I wouldn't say my aunt was fat, but she's about the only woman I know. Hmm. Bought a pair of jeans yesterday. Shuttlecock. <laughs> Older, a bit bigger, not just de developing physically, coming on mentally as well. Starting to ask those awkward questions that kids ask around the age of 12, like, why is one of my eyes pink? <laughs> why have I got no lips? What's these big tadpoles doing on my cheek? I thought it was time to leave the country and go over to London and find a few answers to these questions that were bugging me. My mother was delighted. <laughs> Never seen her in such good form. Jumped right out of the bed, nearly knocked over the radio. Well, I was fed up with this wallpaper anyway. <laughs> 17 years of those flowers was enough for anybody. Well, Rover was a bit depressed when I said I was going away. <laughs> Me and Rover were in the same class in school, you know. Yeah, we were the only two in the whole class who didn't like the Bay City Rollers. She was more into Alice Cooper, I suppose, but... Um, she said to me, if you're going to go away, she said, I'll see you as far as the airport. We had a very emotional farewell at the airport. <laughs> you know, I, I'll rover probably kill me for this, but um, there's actually a tear there. <laughs> Horrible places, airports. That poor man went for a flight for six hours. <laughs> Kids getting bored. Lousy food. <laughs> anyway, away I went. <laughs> I, I went into the airport and said, um, could I have a ticket to London, please? He says, have you got a reservation? I said, I have several reservations, but I'd like to go anyway. <laughs> Great man for the music festivals. <laughs> the old fella, the fla, Glastonbury. Oh, I love them all. Worst thing about the old festivals, you lose your little bit of dope and... Um, <laughs> Thing you know, the whole family's dying looking for it. <laughs> oh, we all like uh, a wee toke now. A wee upper, or a wee downer, or a wee in-betweener in the potching to give you a lift in the morning. And my grandmother, she was the devil for the Isle Hash. Now, we all like to toke, but it was cool. Oh, it was cool, man. 
in those days. And the reason it was so cool, man, was because uh, we sold all the slits off the roof of the house to buy the drugs. And God, that did make it chilly right enough. Oh God, you would notice the difference straight away. And we would sit round that fire, the whole 17 of us. It wasn't lit, of course, but we sat round it anyway. Oh God, times were hard, man. Uh, bread was very scarce. Uh, we were too stoned to go to the shops and buy it, aye. But we would sit round the fire, and uh, my grandfather, he would be sure to say, throw another slab of Moroccan, says he, on that fire. I'm coming down. And him up on the table, uh, wrestling with one of the dogs, or fighting with Pavarotti, and we would sit round that fire, oh God, laughing, laughing, laughing like donkeys. Uh, Hee-haw, I think it would have been, or words to that effect. <laughs> I tried them all. Coke is all right, but it really fucks up your nose. <laughs> You're better off with a good slice of toast, really, I think. Couple of boiled eggs, better raw carrots, some Weetabix. Sex. <laughs> I was a great Kilkenny fan at the time. <laughs> Pubic hair. Oh, the guilt would set in. <laughs> I lost my religion. I lost my virginity. I flirted with transcendental masturbation. <laughs> Old Father Kelly, he would soon give you a penance and make you think twice. <laughs> hmm. Went to Greece on my holidays. Lounging around there on the beach all day. <laughs> Look at the colour of me. <laughs> Bought those togs in Oxfam for 10p. I'll work that as well, actually. <laughs> ticky, 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 ticky. All the big names were out there on Greece on their holidays. Um, Prince Andrew was there. Oh, he's devastated since old Fergie moved off. He won't even look at another woman now. <laughs> People say that he carries a lock of her hair everywhere with him. <laughs> else was around? Um, Salomon Royce <laughs> Smart man, Salomon. He's going to be looking for a typewriter. <laughs> There's your man going, where the hell could that Salomon Royce be? Wouldn't mind a dig of that Salomon bastard in my two-wheeler. <laughs> He's in there going... <laughs> it's the typewriter there, actually. Um, who else was there? Reagan was there. Nancy. <laughs> Busy man, Ronnie Reagan, still. Hasn't had time to change his shirt since he was shot. But uh, Nancy's looking well. You still see the scar there where they took her brain out. <laughs> God, old, old Ronnie could be the next president, the way things are going over there. I wouldn't write him off yet. And it'd be a turn up for the book.
it's me there, 13 years old. <laughs> Hadn't had a drink for three days there. <laughs> oh, I was very fond of my alcohol when I was a lad. <laughs> <laughs> I was a very shy, retiring character when I was sober. But oh god, when I got a few drinks in me, I was a uh, different person altogether. <laughs> alcohol, alcohol. <laughs> Put it there, say him again. <laughs> Don't give a shite. Sit anywhere, say anything. <laughs> Life and soul of the party. <laughs> Gin and tonic. <laughs> Tequila. Woo! <laughs> Laugh, nearly shot myself. <laughs> Next day, I'd have a bloody hangover. <laughs> Never again. Never again. Never again. Where did I get that black eye, for God's sake? <laughs> oh, they might have shite I talked last night. <laughs> oh, it's all coming back to me. Oh, I didn't say that. I did say that. Me and my bloody big mouth, for God's sake. Never again. Mum's the word. Mum's the word. Mum. There's only one thing to do when you feel that bad, is just go out and uh, have another drink! <laughs> Hair off the dog! <laughs> the Garda Patrol. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, God, they were everywhere. Even on the television now. Once a week, regular as clockwork. And the old continuity girl, to be fair to her, she, she would give a three-minute warning. Oh, she, she was the girl could continue now. Continued wasn't the word. And she would say, quick, for God's sake, the guardy are coming. <coughs> and the panicking would start. Oh, God. Oh, drink those pints of pot gene quick, my grandmother would say. Hide that big joint behind the dresser. Get those 25 dogs off the armchair. None of them has been licensed since 1943. And we would get it all piled away in the nick of time. And we would all line up on the sofa, the whole 17 of us, except for Grand uh, knocking away in the cupboard. And we would all, oh, and we would line up there, and who would come on the screen? Only a dirty big yard. <laughs> oh God, a haystack of a man. Now, I had some job getting him on the television, to be honest. I had to take the hat off him at the finish up. Aye. And he came on the screen, and the whole lot of us lined up in a row on the sofa, oh, trying to look innocent, eh? <laughs> oh, innocent, innocent, innocent! Butter would not melt in our mouths. There's a problem eating sandwiches right enough. <laughs> oh, the bread would go down all right. And the ham, and the cheese, and the pickled onions, and the tuna, and the cucumbers. But butter! Uh, no. It would dribble down the corner of your chin, and cake in a big lump on your chest, and one of the dogs would have to be called in to lick it off, and you'd have to hide them under your overcoat in case the old guard would see him. Oh, 17 dogs licking the belly off us. 
tickling shite out of the whole lot of us. A new stone out of your head. <laughs> Trying to keep a straight face in front of that guard. Oh, it was no joke now. And he would look at the whole lot of us. And he would say, hello. Oh, God, that would make you paranoid right now. <laughs> and my grandmother would say, oh, good God, says she, the television's not licensed. <laughs> Him sitting slap bang in the middle of it. Oh, God, says she, if he looks sideways, we're a goner. Aye. <laughs> but lucky enough, he hadn't room to move the eyes. <laughs> Hello, says he. And we go, well, guard, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Down over. How's it going, guard? Soft day, sergeant, for some hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he wasn't amused, no. He wouldn't let on, he heard you. Hello, says he, and welcome to Garda Patrol. <coughs> oh, God, it was a language now, uh, right enough in its day, the old uh, Irish. Aye. And, oh, God, uh, I, I knew the Irish. Oh, I can't remember half of it now. Oh, see, she is. Aye. That was most of it now. That would get you a job in the civil service, right enough. Aye. See, she is. Uh, sit. In other words, that was a handy one to have for the dog, you see. I see she is Rover. And our Rover would give you a dirty look. And away out through the window and over the hedges, yelping his head off. Oh, he, he wasn't going to sit there and get the head battered off him over some obscure point of grammar. Oh, no. See she is. Aye. Oh, there was more than that now. Kid. Oh, Kid Mila Falcher. Aye. A hundred thousand uh, tourist boards. Oh, um, it's common, uh, common again. Common again. That was a good phrase. Aye, Ireland's answer to um, "Gone with the wind." You see. And then there was the old greetings. May the road, may the road rise to meet you. Aye, may you be walking uphill for the rest of your life. Yeah, you bastard you. Oh, may you be in hell. Half an hour before you're dead, you devil you. you May all your Christmases be white. May you die roaring in a snowdrift, you shite you. Oh, God, there was a language of its own, right enough. And there was a knack to it, uh, like everything else. There was a trick to memorising it. Uh, there was a trick, my grandfather, he learnt it off the Christian brothers, and he passed it on to us, you see. And you got a big lump of a stick. Oh, six foot long, be two, be three, be nine, be four and a half. And you would bother yourself, you see, round the side of the head, starting about nine in the morning and finishing at four in the afternoon. And if you kept that up for 18 years, oh, God, you would soon find it sinking in right enough. But uh, getting it out again w was the hard part, aye. Oh, God, grammar. Oh, Tommy. Aye, Tommy. Ta me ta tu. Oh, ta she. Ta she shin shiv shing shed. Ta everybody. Ta the whole 17 hours, really. And then there was kneel me. Uh, oh, God, the arguments would start very quick. Kneel me, I'm not. Be me and ta me, I'm not. I am, I'm damn sure you're not. Be me. Knee be. Hit me, hit me, and I, I'll hit you, you bastard, you. Chucky me and I'll chucky you through the uh, uh, finog as quicky as I look at you, you bastard you. Uh, yoey me, I yoey you a damn good kick up the arse. Ducky me, quacky me, I'll damn sure I'll duck, I'll not stand there and keep get the shin fein kicked off me. And then um, hug me, make up for God's sake, aye. Oh God, it was a, a damn good language. Oh Kojak, ho 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 ho. He was a policeman. He didn't wear the uniform, but we knew rightly. <laughs> uh, we read it in the RTE guide. We were one step ahead of him, aye. But Kojak, sharp. Oh, God, sharp. Kojak, sharp, sharp. Sharp wasn't the word bald. 
bald, that was the word, bald, bald at a rabbit. He shouldn't have been outdoors at all. He should have been in his bed, the critter, with a brown paper bag over his head and a pair of dark glasses strapped round him. But he wasn't as stupid as he looked. The same Kojak, oh no, that would have been impossible, really. <laughs> no, Kojak, he always got the criminal. He had to hand it to him, and there wasn't a week went by on that godforsaken, unfortunate, ill-starred program that be some poor man, woman, or child got dead. God rest the whole lot of them dumped together in a skip on the Lower East Side, and never got the craters. But my grandmother, she would say a decade of the rosary before every Kojak. Please, God, for a happy and a peaceful and a trouble-free Kojak. <laughs> St. Jude intercede. Aye. And the decade wouldn't be right out of her mouth. There'd be some poor man lying dead on the pavement. And there was this week, God, there was a young man from Chicago that got dead on the pavement. And he was 40 floors down from this open window. It, it was a suicide. But he pushed himself in the back, you see, <laughs> to make it look like murder. <laughs> oh, it was a hard one to figure out. <laughs> and oh, there was 40 policemen at him, like a jigsaw, trying to make head or tail of him now. And at the finish up, they said, to hell with it, get Kojak. <laughs> He'll soon sort out the shite. So, the Ryan Kojak, in the middle of the night, aye, always in the middle of the night, they were bothering the crater. <laughs> and Kojak, he jumped up in the bed, grabbed the phone, I'm on my way. <laughs> Didn't bother asking where he was supposed to be going. <laughs> no such thing as a description of the man or where his head or his tail was or anything. No. I'm on my way. And him away down the street roaring like a madman. <laughs> Turning cartwheels down the stairs, strapping on machine guns and knives and away up the street with the head down, machine guns blazing. Let me out the bastard. <laughs> and him bollock naked. didn't take time to put a stitch on him. <laughs> and the wife, Mrs. Kojak, she would have been, one of the downtown Manhattan Kojaks's. <laughs> she would be sure to say, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> yeah, 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 baldy old bastard, yeah. <laughs> At this unfortunate hour of the middle of the night, says she, get back into that fucking bed, says she. <laughs> she had a tongue on her, Mrs. Kojak. <laughs> oh, you couldn't repeat half of it now, to be honest. But I just did, anyway. Right. <laughs> get back into that fucking bed, says she. Or I'll ram 15 lollipops up your arse, says she. God forgive her. She shouldn't have been anywhere near a television. <laughs> and the whole lot of us hiding behind the sofa. <laughs> Rosary beads stuffed in her ears. Oh, she had a tongue on her. Who loves you, baby? It's fucking not me, you baldy eyes shit. You could not be up to her. Now, she had a tongue. She kept it in the fridge. <laughs> Just to throw him off the trail, you see. And Kojak, away up the street, roaring as good as he got. There were two of a kind, the Kojaks, really. She was as bald as he was, right? 
Now, Kojak away up the street, and the machine guns blazing, and the head down, and the old wobbly arse knocking about like a pancake in the wind. <laughs> old hairy arse on him. You would think he had a sheepdog up his arse. <laughs> in fact, he didn't have a sheepdog up his arse. It was Rover hiding from the Irish lesson. And uh, he would kick down the first door <laughs> that he came to. Aye. Oh, simple but effective. Now, trained in Temple Moor. Aye. <laughs> he would blarge in with the head down, and there'd be some poor man shaving. Five o'clock in the morning, getting ready for the early shift. Kojak would charge in. Right, baby! The shit hits the fan. <laughs> that was a handy oil phrase to have. None of us had a clue what it meant. But we used the way at it anyway. Many a time I heard my grandfather, one of the dogs would be annoying him, blocking the heat in front of the fire. Right, Rover, the shit hits the fan. Out through the window, Rover would go. <laughs> On the point of Wellington. Five or six other dogs after him in a row. Right, baby, shit hits the fan. The man would wheel round shaving, and he would say, Sorry, Kojak, I don't know what you mean. We weren't the only ones who were struggling, no. I haven't a clue what you're on about, baldy bollocks. Rover arse. Oh, he had a language of his own, Kojak. And it wasn't Irish, no. You better spar start spilling some beans, Buster. Or you'll be doing a long stretch in the can. <laughs> you better get those beans out of the can. Or you'll grin yourself, you Buster, you. Motherfucker. There'll be some heavy shit running down your leg. Oh, God forgive him. But he would keep up that stream of nonsense for half an hour. And the old dog uh, reciting the present tense up, up his arse. And at the finish up, he would say, Sorry, boss, just routine. <laughs> and he would switch off the fan. <laughs> get a big roll of toilet paper <laughs> out of his pocket of the trousers that he hadn't got on him. And he would wipe the worst of it off the walls and the man's face and the phone and the television. And away on to the next house. And he would kick down about five or six hundred doors now. On a good morning. Oh, he didn't hang around. And the next door he kicked in, 501st door. Right, baby, shit hits the fan. Rover yelping away. The man would wheel round shaving. And he would say to Kojak, Excuse me, Kojak, I'm a busy man. Oh, <laughs> that was the giveaway. Hey. <laughs> busy was not the thing to be. With Kojak knocking about. No. You could plead ignorance and say you didn't know what he was talking about, but busy. Busy doing what? Chopping up bodies right, left, and center. Uh, hands sticking out under the floorboards. I'm a psychopath written on lipstick in the mirror. <laughs> you nearly know yourself now. <laughs> and Kojak, he'd be making a note of all these clues. <laughs> and there would be about 28 minutes gone. <laughs> that was the other trick, you see. He had half an hour to get the bastard. <laughs> and oh, he cut it fine now, many a time. And my grandmother would be keeping an eye on the stopwatch. <laughs> oh, that must be him, Kojak. That's him. Go on. Go on. Take him away, for Christ's sake. Quick. The reading is on in three minutes, he eager you. <laughs> Hit the shite with the fan and be done with it, Kojak. <laughs> and Kojak would say, take this man down to the lab. Everything had to be took down to the damn dull lab. He was only a piece of dog shite in the street. Take that down to the lab before I slide in my arse and fall on it. 
one of the hazards of walking around bollock naked in Manhattan City. <laughs> and that's the way that we lived our life in what we used to call, for want of a better word, the good old days. Good night and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.